So, I've got all the ingredients in the recipe that I sent you out and ready to go. Make sure that your butter is softened enough. I've turned the oven on to 375. I've got my pans lined with the parchment paper and we're all set to go. Um, there is one thing I forgot. You can stay right there, Dan. I'll work around you. I need the paddle for the mixer. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is take your butter. And like I said, make sure it's really softened. You don't want it liquidy, you know, like if you're melting it in the microwave. That's not good. And then you're gonna take your half of a cup of regular cooking oil, which I use canola, because it's healthier, and it's a half a cup. And you're gonna pour those two ingredients in first. And then you're going to get that on. And then this gets, these two ingredients get creamed together. medium high speed just until they're creamed together you don't want to do it too long but you want to make sure that the butter is not chunky Turn your speed down because you don't want your sugar going everywhere. And then you're going to take your three quarters cup of sugar and you're just going to gradually add it, mixing well after each entry of it. And then this gets beat until it's light and fluffy. And th the directions say about five minutes, but I never go five minutes. You see how it's starting to cream up? That's what you want. You want that white fluffy cream. usually stop it so that I can scrape down the sides because you don't want just plain sugar or plain um, shortening or anything on the bottom. You want it all mixed really, really well. Scrape the little paddle wheel thingy down because it's just easier. Plus, it doesn't get messy on the base when you take the bowl off. All right, so this is where everything else comes into play. So now you're going to add your one egg. Okay. It calls for two teaspoons of vanilla. I always do a little more because I like vanilla. And then you can add flavor variations. So what I do is I add a teaspoon and a half of almond. And it's really closer to two teaspoons, just so you know. All right, and then to give it color, 
I buy these at Walmart. They're the Wilton colors. This is the red. This is truly red and it's no taste. Some of them have taste, but I always just get the ones that have no taste to it. Where's my little knife? There it is. All right. Now, when you're doing other colors, it's up to you how much you add. This is a gel, so I just take a little knife and I dump some in. And start out with what you want. You can also use a toothpick if you feel more comfortable in doing that. It's either or. Okay. Now. This is step three. So any additions that you're going to make have to be done in this section. Because once you start adding the flour, after all this is mixed together, it'll just turn into a pancake at that point. So you're going to put all this back in here and you're going to mix all of it until it is all incorporated. You use medium high speed. I stop sometimes in between because if I don't like that color red, if it looks too pink, I add more red. But I also scrape my sides down so everything is an even color. Mom always likes pink poinsettias, so we're going to leave it a pinkish red. But if you look, see how the, if you don't scrape your sides down, see how much white I still have in there? So you need to make sure you scrape your sides down really well. And then you put it back in there. Oops, sorry. Put it back in there and we're going to mix it just a little bit more. Alright, I've already combined the flour, the baking powder, and the salt in here. This gets entered into the mixture in three even increments. Never got it in evenly, but just make sure that you mix well and turn this off before you add your flour each time. Learn the hard way on that one. So just tap your batter, your flour in. Turn this on. And the more that you add, the stiffer your dough is going to get, which is what you want. But just make sure, you'll see, if you look inside the bowl, you'll see how the flour is caked on the sides before you add your next batch of flour. Scrape all that down because it's all got to get mixed in in the increments that you're adding it or it becomes lumpy. just a little bit more because we had a lot of flour left on the side.
and see how the stiff how stiff the dough is getting. That's what you want. That's why you don't want to have the um, your butter too soft. Otherwise, it's going to be a really oily, runny kind of a mess as you're working with the dough, trying to get it into your into your press. Just scrape your sides down again really good. Get all that flour off the edges. And also dig to your bottom a little bit. Mix this one more time and then we have one more thing of flour to add in. batch of flour. You'll see how stiff that is. That's exactly the way you want it. Because again, if it's too soft, it's not going to come out of your cookie press right. Alright, so let's mix this together really good. Scrape these sides down one last time. the flour I put it up on a higher speed just kind of mix it around get everything moving so that that flour gets incorporated really really well and while that last few minutes is working I go ahead and get my cookie press ready now remember your cookie press is probably going to be very different from mine so this part will vary as you go ahead to do your There. I'm just gonna wash my hands real quick because this part I have to you have to do with your hands because you can't get all the dough off the paddle with the spatula. It just doesn't work. Just get as much of the dough off. Some of it is going to stick and that's fine. This should make about five dozen cookies depending on your cookie size and what size cookie your press uses. All right, so, and you'll see it's, it's, a, it's a stiff, sticky dough, which is fine. So we're going to put that right there. Wipe my hands. All right. And then you're going to take your spatula and just scrape around the edges a little bit so everything is mixed together pretty well. And then don't load too much in the beginning because you kind of want it to just fall on its own down to the base. And like I said, your cookie press I think is different from mine. 
So your loading of your press is going to be different. Don't overload the cookie press because some I've done that before and what happens is it shoots out the sides and that's never fun because you lose a lot of dough that way. Alright, so now put this on and put that on. And like I said, I've already got the, the cookie sheets ready and they're lined with parchment paper. So again, this is going to vary depending on your press but I hold mine down and watch the little paddle wheel push down, which it's not doing, hold on. Alright. Okay. And then with mine, you'll start to hear when it hits the end, and I count to myself to five. Two, three, four, five. And sometimes it takes a couple. One, two, three, four, five. Alright. What's going on here? tray and I go ahead and get all my trays that this tube will fill done and then put the trays in and reload. gonna do so what I then what I do is because I'm doing these and they have the little points I just push the little points down so when they cook it looks more like a flower now the trees are easier because they don't have any of the little points or anything so they usually come out a little bit easier and then after these are cooked I either go back and um, put little pearls like yellow pearls in the center to make them look more like a poinsettia or um, I'll use frosting, yellow frosting. So we're going to go ahead and get this one put in. I'm going to fix these and if one comes out and you don't like it just pull it off, throw it back in your pan and go to the next one. These get cooked in the oven on 375 for 10 to 12 minutes or until they just start to look the tips of the cookies start to look brown once that happens pull them out because the bottoms are already brown because the bottoms will turn brown and cook faster and that's it you're all set and ready to go in the oven just keep repeating until you're done with the cookie dough So that's the first tray going in and they get cooked like I said for 10 to 12 minutes. I usually set it for about 11 but I keep a really good check on it. Go. Oh I'm gone. Okay so I set the timer for 11 minutes but it actually 
there's still two minutes left and these are ready to come out but you'll see see how they're crisp around the edges and if you turn them over they're just right on the back let them sit on the pan for just a few minutes let them cool on the pan for just a few minutes and then move them to a cookie sheet and let them finish cooling entirely and then you're done